guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is the disappearance of a young boy and we still don't know what happened to him. We don't know who took him, where he is. Nobody knows to this day. It is the case of Michael Dunhee. Michael Wayne Dunahy was born on the 12th of May in 1986 to parents Bruce and Crystal in Victoria, British Columbia. Now, he also did have a younger sister. At the time of him going missing, she was, like, not even one yet. But he absolutely adored her. You know, when she came along, he loved her to pieces. And his parents just loved seeing the pair grow up together. Michael was apparently a very well-behaved young boy. You would listen to his parents. He would always do as he was told. And Michael was a massive fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, a massive fan. He ended up getting a big box of them for Christmas that he spent in 1990. And you can see in the video that he was just so happy with them. He, en he ends up shouting turtle power, like, dead excitedly. And, you know, he just absolutely loved it. Michael... <sighs> It was one of the things that his parents really remember him for, just his absolute love for the mutant ninja turtles. But, you know, he was also really outgoing, <laughs> playful, typical lad who likes cars, planes, things like that. He really enjoyed dump trucks, you know, like the little toy that you... Well, you all know what a dump truck is, I don't know why I'm trying to explain it. <laughs> and at the time of him going missing, he was just, like, learning to ride a bike without his training wheels on. And he just started to get a bit more adventurous and wanted to go and play out on his own and things like that, like in the garden. He was said that he was quite small for his age, but, you know, he was a very chatty kid. He was very clever and outgoing and, you know, he just was loving life. They were just an ordinary family, just getting through life. And then his dad actually remembers when his sister, Caitlin, was born. Sorry, I never mentioned her name, actually. She's called Caitlin. When Caitlin was born, you know, he absolutely obsessed over her and doted over her. He always wanted to hold her and he just loved his baby sister. He also had this good little friend called Felicia Bernia and they would often play together. You can see them together in this photo. This was about Christmas time. Well, you can tell with the Christmas tree, obviously. But they used to enjoy playing together and Felicia, remembering back, from, like says that this is the only picture that they had together, which is just so heartbreaking. They used to play together all the time and loved enjoyed each other's company so now let us go to sunday the 24th of march in 1991 michael actually went to blanchard elementary school which was in victoria now his mother actually had this football game i believe it was a flag football practice sorry that's what it was and you know both his parents went she was gonna the mother, crystal was gonna be out playing bruce was gonna be spectating Michael was wearing a blue hooded jacket at the time, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles t-shirt because obviously he was obsessed with it. He had rugby pants on and blue trainers. So the family got there around 12.30pm and there was a playground close by and Michael had asked if he could go and play on the playground. The playground was very close to the field in which obviously Crystal was going to be doing her flag football practice and she kind of felt like something was off. She didn't really want to let him go but she thought, well, it's not that far away and I'll go and get Bruce to sort of, you know, meet him there. So she allowed Michael to walk the short distance to the park and she told Bruce to basically go and meet him down there. She told Mike, she said to Michael, once you get to the park, stay there and wait for daddy to come. And obviously he was going to go and watch over him. Now, Michael, again, he was a sensible kid. He was, he always followed the rules. He always did what his parents said. So you can assume safely, probably, that... He walked over to that park and then he stood there waiting for Bruce. But then Bruce made his way over and when he got there, Michael was nowhere to be seen. And I believe he literally, you know, it wasn't like an hour before he got there. He, it was sort of, I don't know the exact time frame, but I'm guessing I've read that it was moments later. So maybe minutes later, I don't actually know. The thing was, obviously, Michael was now missing and it had happened not long ago. So everyone around there is panicking because his mum is informed, she starts panicking. Within sort of moments, 50 people are already around looking for Michael. There's 
obviously there's all the football game, there's all the spectators and they're all there searching for him to try and find him. You're probably thinking that he's just wandered off, that he's, you know, he will be found. And especially with all those people looking for him, surely you're going to find him, right? But they didn't. Police were also contacted. They came down straight away. They were doing everything they could to try and find Michael. News spread very quickly about his disappearance. Police were asking for tips from the public. They received tips from the public. You know, more and more information was coming in. People were just trying to help wherever they could. And again, he was a five-year-old little boy at this point. So you just... I can't even imagine the family's despair and panic at that, you know, at that moment in time. It's just devastating. With Michael sort of just vanishing moments, you know, after his parents last saw him, he was gone. There were 50 people looking for him. He was not there. They, the police were pretty certain that it was an abduction because of how quickly he had gone from that area. So if he just toddled off, you know, past the park, ended up in, I don't know, a field somewhere, there were people looking for him straight away. They would have found him, but they didn't. So obviously he must have been taken. That is what the police's thinking was. So it was classified as an abduction straight away. The police were getting flooded with tips to the point where they were actually struggling to sort of get on top of them. That's how many, how much information was coming in. Obviously, despite that, they were trying really hard to keep on top of everything, to try and follow up every lead, no matter how small or something, you know, it could be major in the case you may think it's a tiny little bit of information but it could be something that breaks the entire case so they're really looking into everything they needed to find michael as quick michael sorry as quickly as they could but despite all the information coming in despite just tons of information they didn't find him the problem was is that they they didn't have any witnesses or anything all we know is that his mum let him go to the playground, sent the dad after him, and then he was gone. Nobody came forward to say that they had witnessed somebody taking him, or him wandering off, or anything. There was literally nothing. And as you can imagine, that's like finding a needle in an haystack because nobody knows. Nobody knows what a person that took him looks like. Pfft, nothing. I mean, they don't even know whether he was taken. It's safe to assume that he was, obviously, and the police do believe that. But realistically, nobody saw anything. We don't actually know. Police really, really tried everything they could. They even recreated the day that Michael went missing. They got all the people on the field. They, I guess they were hoping that maybe he would come and try and take another child. He, she, don't know who it was, obviously, would come and try and take another child. But, you know, they were there. They waited it out and nothing. There was nobody acting suspicious. Or sometimes criminals do revisit the scene of the crime so you know maybe that would happen but there was nobody that looked suspicious or anything like that and none of the witnesses sort of recreating that day seeing it all again it didn't spark any new memories which obviously can happen too sometimes you may forget some piece of information and then if you see something similar it might you might think oh gosh i forgot about that and then you know go and tell the police but it didn't happen the police were doing everything they could to try and keep him in the public eye because Obviously, they rely heavily on the public with these cases, so they needed to get his face out there. He was on milk cartons, he was on the news, he was... Do the family were doing public appeals, you know, they just tried everything to get him out there. They also put up a reward for any information leading to finding Michael, but, again, nothing led anywhere. Michael was just a four-year-old little boy when he went missing, and to this day, we have no idea what happened to him where he is if somebody took him if he is still alive out there somewhere obviously over the years age progressions have been done for him and there have been leads over the years where they have found people that potentially looked like michael i believe there's been like three or four of them spread out through the years with the first one being in 2006 it was a young man who lived in british columbia who looked a lot like michael so he actually did dna tests and it was proven to not be Michael. And again, that was repeated like four times. They've done DNA tests on four different people thinking that it might have been him, but it, it never was. It's never turned out to be him. There was some suspicion about a man who actually confessed to murdering a child in 1959 and said that he had been forced to kill another child, but didn't go into any details on that. And when this man actually passed away due to natural causes, and then when the police searched his home, they found that he had this like weird obsession with missing children he had lots of, mainly males 
He had lots of posts and things, one of which was of Michael. But obviously, he has since passed away. They didn't find anything concrete to link him or anything like that. He's not even, I don't believe he's even a suspect in the case. You know, he's just, he could have just had, if he's got all these other different missing children and Michael was a missing child, you know, it might just be that he has an unhealthy obsession with missing children for some strange reason. But yeah, he might have just got that poster because Michael's a missing child, not because he had anything to do with him actually going missing. Or he could have had something to do with him going missing. Who knows at this point, but the police don't have any evidence or anything to link him fully to Michael's case. But yeah, that's that's about it really. In 2021, they did another age progression sketch as what they think Michael may look like today if he is still alive. And that's honestly about it we have on the case. To this day, we have no idea and Michael's case remains unsolved. (sighs) This case is just devastating the fact that his family were just there let him walk to the park send his dad after him and he was gone and to this you know 30 years later he's been missing like 30 years now so he would be about 34 years old now you know nobody knows whether he's still alive or anything and his family are just absolutely heartbroken about it obviously i can't imagine the turmoil of such a thing if that's the end of it if you guys have enjoyed this video give me a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel for similar content Anyway, that's all I have to today on the case of Michael Dunahee. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.